This may look like a million bucks, but it was only a hundred bucks. This is not a haunted house, but my bedroom. I'm gonna show you how we built this set for under a hundred bucks. Hi, this is J.P. Morgan. I'm Adam Hagenboom. And I'm Katie Lohman. And we've come together to do a Halloween shot this year. Terry Groves of Makeup Magic did the fabulous makeup work on our clowns. And now we're going to get those clowns in and work on this little set we built in the corner of my bedroom. Built this set for under $100. We're going to show you how we lit it. We're going to show you how we use some smoke to make it come alive. So let's get started and see what we can do. So here's my set. A piece of Luan, $25. Old paint I had in the garage. I mixed a couple of colors up with an old piece of brush and, and then a sheet of brick from Home Depot, like another $30. We cut that up and used it in a couple of different places. We rented a chair for $25 and curtains for about 12 bucks from a thrift store nearby. Bob ran over and got some carpet from the guys. I was walking this morning with Jolene and going, hey, they're tearing their bathroom out. So sent Bob over there and he got us a carpet and some tiles and things to throw on the floor. Newspaper that we used to make the wallpaper under a hundred bucks and props and things from Terry. It's always somebody you can borrow things from. All right, let's talk about how we lit this. You know, even though we built the set for under $100, we certainly threw a lot of light at this set. The reason was is I wanted small pools of light and just really interesting, kind of moody and scary and creepy light. So very small pools of light. If you don't have a lot of lights to put, throw at this thing, then start with a single small light on him and a backlight from behind. And you'll find out that that's about 90% of what you got here. So first off, we put two lights outside and turned one camera right and one camera left. And that way we get shafts going both directions around our clown in the foreground and look fabulous. So we put a full blue on each of those to get a nice blue light coming in those windows and those streaks coming from the hazer. They were running from the uh, bathroom on the other side. So we're running that haze in, shafts of light from the sides. Those first two look fabulous. Then we put a key on our clown in the chair that would move with her. It's a grid. So everywhere she moved, we try to keep that keyed on her. Then we put a key on our clown up front, our main clown. We want to key that. We went from high sometimes with that to very low other times. And then the very split light. We tried to really move that around. We even went to a 10 degree grid and sometimes we're at a 40 degree grid. Number five, I wanted the lamp on the floor to just give us an excuse to have a little bit of warmth in the shot and also to motivate some of the light in the corner here. So we have a lamp that's falling over, lamp is still on. We put a Baja from behind and that lit up the lamp. So number six, the light in the corner, it's behind the curtain. We put a red gel on it. Just give us a little bit of red depth in that corner. So it's just kind of an interesting kind of accent light there. All of these things change drastically when you get more and more of the uh, smoke in the room or the haze. Because the haze bounces the light around and creates a lot more fill light in here. So the images will change from being more dense to being a lot more open. You could use practicals for some of this. If you let this light here on the floor burn in, and longer exposure, it'll give you kind of warmth in this corner and open up the corner like the strobe that we put in there. So there are things you could do to be able to make this a lot less simple and a lot less light heavy. But I have these lights and so I turned them on. And that's how we lit it. We opened up the window, put a fan through the window to kind of blow the curtains around so we get the curtains blowing around. And don't forget, I'm using my new camera on 2470. I'm loving this lens. It's my third or fourth time out with it and it's doing a great job. So check it out. Check out the review, we got it coming. So let's take a look at some of those images. So here's some images with that under light on our clown in the foreground. Here's some images of that light a little higher and then in a split light. So there we go, we finished our shoot. What'd you guys think? It's a blast. I loved it, it was creepy. The dolls and the clowns and the smoke and things, it was very creepy. I learned a few things though. I truly learned, I truly learned that you can create just a little corner of any room and create anything in that corner. Uh, we put a few walls up, we created a little bit of junk on the floor. That's really fascinating because it opens up a lot of possibilities. And you think, well, I don't have a lot of money. Well, it doesn't take a lot of money. So keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. Our Mastering Studio Strobes download was put together to help you overcome the fears that people have getting into the world of strobes. It's gonna answer the question of what strobe should I buy? What's best for me? It'll help you understand how to sync them. It'll help you understand what modifiers you should purchase. It's going to help you understand all the questions you need to know to move comfortably into the world of strobes. So go to thatslinelens.com where you can download it today.
We're serious about this, and we want you to follow us here on the Slide of Lens. You can follow these guys too at Real Katie Loman at Instagram. And at Hagen Boo. And there you have it. Honk. <laughs>